Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Here we got a Vespa GTS HPE Super Tech that's in need of a rear tire. And that's probably the most common thing that you're gonna come across along with the regular services. And I'm gonna go over all the steps on changing the tires. I have a prior video on changing a tire on the earlier model GTSs. This is nearly identical. They just have a slight variation because there's a wheel speed sensor that's on the rear wheel. That's just one little extra step that we move. And I'm gonna change it up for this video. I'm not gonna do the work. I'm gonna have my technician do the work and I'm just gonna talk about what he does. Let's go into the tools needed to change out the tire, the rear tire on a GTS. So before my technician starts on the job, usually he knows all the tools he needs for whatever common job, you know. It's just nice to be prepared and not run to the toolbox, you know, nine different times to get each one of these tools. So I always encourage efficiency in working. Uh, he'll pull all the tools that he needs. He's got a 24 millimeter socket, a small extension, a six millimeter um, Allen that attaches to a 3 8 ratchet, a T40, a uh, Torx driver attaches also to a 3 8 socket. Diagonal pliers to remove the cotter pin. He'll have um, just a set of adjustable wrench. A T25 Torx driver for the, um, the speed sensor. Also an 8 millimeter socket to remove the speed sensor from the carrier bracket. A 17 millimeter 3 8 socket to remove the rear shock. Uh, impact wrench and a torque wrench right here. So obviously the correct tire is needed to change it out. We're just gonna put another Michelin City Grip, which is this identical tire, a 130-70-12. Um, Travis just loosened the exhaust clamp and I'll show you how that works. Also, you're gonna need to have a cotter pin on hand. Uh, I would recommend having a new exhaust gasket on hand, and we'll show you that part. When you look in the description, I'll have all the tools needed along with all the parts needed to do this job. And typically, we would always replace the stem. So he's removing the muffler. There's going to be three T40 Torx fasteners, and the muffler just pulls right off the header. And right now, it's kind of hot because we are let the bike cool down for a moment. Now you have full access to this rear carrier. So T25 Torx, to remove the two wire clips. And then you'll need an eight millimeter socket to remove the, the wheel speed sensor. Keep in mind there's a little washer behind it. Sometimes there's washers in front as well to shim it. This one didn't need it, doesn't have it, so no issues there. And then we'll remove the single fastener for the, uh, the nut for the rear shock. You can see the bike is up on its center stand. Don't need any special uh, lifts or anything. You can do this on the ground, but as long as you have the bike on a center stand. He rolls the cotter pin, the old cotter pin, with the diagonal pliers, and that's the best way to do it. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to remove it, but with diagonal pliers, I found that's the easiest way and just levers it right out of the hole. And then you have that little crown cap that comes right off. And obviously having a nice electric or uh, pneumatic impact wrench makes the job very easy. If you do not have an impact wrench, you can always lock up the rear wheel by carefully ins ins inserting like a large round diameter um, screwdriver in one of those brake holes, make sure it's not contacting any critical parts of the caliper, but you could lock it up that way. Uh, or use the clutch tool that locks it up. You remove the two front Allen fasteners with the six millimeter Allen, the carrier comes off. And we'll always check that bearing. This is a fairly new scooter, so there's no problems with the, um, you know, the bearing. You know, check it, make sure it's smooth, there's no free play in it. Um, came right off because it's fresh. Sometimes you'll need to have a special tool to do that. The nice thing about these newer scooters is the ABS tone ring right here is attached to the wheel. Uh, some of the early 2015, 2016 models, they had special wheel studs that the uh, tone wheel attached to. So these are pretty straightforward, just comes right off. 
Now you can separate the tire or the wheel from the hub. One thing to keep in mind, this thing does slide around, so you don't want to lose that part. Now we're off to the tire machine. So first of all, this is something you're not going to easily do at home. I mean, you could do it with good old tire iron. Um, I just recommend bringing the wheel to even a local tire shop that can handle a motorcycle wheel. They'd be happy to do this, but pretty much there's a uh, air powered uh, squeezer that's pretty dangerous to use that will pop the bead off the, the tire and put it right into the relief. So both sides of the tire, he'll go ahead and relieve the bead, pop it into the machine. The machine's all set up for these smaller tires. And a lot of times we'll have soapy water or there's this other grease stuff. And it'll set the machine so it does not touch the wheel. Nice thing about these automatic machines, they don't make physical contact to the wheel as that, that um, shoe does all the work. And this is a perfect time to clean your wheel if you want to. You can see you got it all the way off. You can clean up the wheel. And get into the other side. One thing if he, I didn't speak about, he just cut the old valve stem out with a diagonal set of pliers. Typically, you just don't want to reuse those. We just don't know the age of them. So we always recommend just changing the valve stem every time. You could put a metal stem in there, but even those have some danger in using, using it. And he has a plug in there. I know there was, he had a flat tire at one point. Uh, it can kind of get you home in a pinch, but don't really recommend plugging a tire. And the tire goes in a stack to be recycled. State of California, it's about $3 to recycle tire, whether it's a, a 37 inch truck tire or a small scooter tire. So in the parts washer, he'll be able to quickly clean the wheel. And I'll tell you one thing, if you're a local customer and you have a Vespa GTV, the technician you want to ask for is Luis. He'll like spend more time polishing your chrome wheel on your GTV than he will do doing the whole entire job. Uh, one other thing we'll do while it's in the parts washer typically is remove the old wheel weights. It's pretty important to balance the wheels on these higher speed uh, scooters, Vespas. Pretty much my rule of thumb is anything that's over 200 cc's, 200 cc's and over, will balance the wheels because those are scooters that are truly highway capable and that's where you'd notice an imbalanced tire. Um, but you can see you can just totally get in there, clean the wheel very nice. You mostly brake dust on there from the brake pads. And before he puts the wheel back on, he'd, he'd inspect the brakes because this is a perfect opportunity to replace the brake pads. We're not going to do it on this service. I know the brake pads are in good condition, so no issues there. And you see there's always a lot of residue that's pretty difficult to get off. Uh, a little plastic scraper sometimes will get it off with the solvent going by it. Uh, I see a lot of, a lot of wheels where uh, there's like all the different areas where there's, um, where there's uh, the residue left behind from the adhesive from the wheel weights. So while Travis is preparing the wheel for the new tire, it is possible to balance at home if you have something like this, a truing stand. Uh, it's got precision bearings on there. And we have, you could buy different spacers to bolt up. You know, this would be a set that would work good with the, the Vespa wheel. And you find the heavy spot, you add weights to the top. You find plenty of other videos on how to statically balance a tire or wheel. Uh, here we'll do it dynamically with an automatic machine because it's able to do it really, really quick. But let's move back over to uh, Travis. Wheel's nearly ready to install the new tire. So wheel goes back in the, the tire machine. We'll put a new stem in there. And they're a uh, short stem. Our part number for that stem is stem two. It's a shorter stem than a normal automotive stem. And nice thing is it has a new valve core. 
in there. So, you know, one thing, not only are you replacing the rubber stem, you're replacing the little core that, um, that holds the pressure back. You know, there's just two things, two places where that could fail or leak. Uh, just want to do set up for success. Very inexpensive part to change out every time. Just using this special tool that pulls the stem right in. I have the brand new tire. They are directional and that's specific for the rear tire. It's a Michelin City Grip. Uh, kind of the longest lasting tire still for the GTS, in my opinion, kind of the best all arounder. There's plenty of other good tires out there, but I've tried a lot of them. I've ridden customers that swear by a different brand of tire or whatever. I'm like, I don't know. This is still the best in my opinion. And there's less expensive tires, there's more expensive tires. Um, but I would say 95, 90% of the uh, GTS that we just put a city grip on. So he's putting a small amount of special tire lubricant on the bead. And the machine's already set up with the correct spacing. And the machine rotates the wheel so it drops the, uh, the bead right into the relief. Again, it's, you could do it with tire irons, it's just a lot harder than with a machine like this. Nice thing about the machine, it makes no contact to the, uh, the wheel. So there's no chance of, um, of damaging the wheel with this machine as long as it's properly set up. So we got air pressure set up. Uh, the seated tire, typically you don't want to be going over 50 pounds. Um, shouldn't take much with the lubricant on the, the wheel. And the direction's all set up. There's a little arrow on the tire that indicates the direction, along with right here. So that's the rotation of the wheel. And next he's gonna chuck it up in the automatic tire balancer here. Clean up the wheel, kind of get the goo off it. And you have a nice polished up wheel. So our machine is specifically set up mostly to do Vespa wheels. I have a Vespa hub in the machine right here. Um, I've seen people machine special spacers. Uh, there's many ways to do it, but in a shop, shop environment, we just bolt it right to a hub and I've balanced the machine without a wheel and calibrated the machine so it's all set up for that hub. And there are a lot of special settings that you set up on these machines like the wheel diameter to wheel width, um, the distance of the tire, how far is it from the machine. Um, you know, he's showing how the distance set normally is always just set up correct. You gotta reprogram it. It might have been set up for a different wheel last. So reset the, the machine. So he'll run the machine, step away from it and it does its magic. So it's pretty much detecting the small oscillations in the wheels and that's how it could tell you where, how many wheel weights. Looks like it needs 10 grams of weight and the machine tells you right where those weights need to go. So, so very, very simple. Clean off the rim a little bit with some type of contact cleaner and then we can get wheel weights in there. Typically I like to put them on the outboard edge uh, just because it, um, less likely make contact to the brake caliper. And we have wheel weights available in black, silver, and kind of a chrome finish. And being a black wheel, of course, we're gonna use the black weights. Looks a little better than the factory weights where they just use like regular metal looking weights. They have a self adhesive strip and they're in five gram increments. They kind of match what the machine, um, you know, weight suggestion. And you can run the machine again. And if it says five grams or zero grams, then you know you have a perfectly balanced wheel. And there you go, you can see it says zero. So the wheel needs no additional weights to balance it. So Travis has a new tire mounted. In addition to the wheel speed upgrade, which you can watch another video on, on installation and calibration of the traction control system, they gain pretty much like 
seven miles an hour on your HPE GTS. Uh, pretty critical thing. Uh, it doesn't void the warranty as the motor doesn't really rev any higher. It still hits the same uh, rev limit that they've always hit. Um, and the, also the other added benefit of that tone wheel is the indicated speed is now more accurate. So he put all five of the fasteners with the wave washer and the flat washer and using power tools uh, to get them all started. And just kind of goes between all of them, gets them all seated. And then we'll go back with a torque wrench and torque all those to about 16 foot pounds. And you could go diagonal between them, but he has them all already seated at this point. So not really too much of an issue. Just make sure that you get every single one torqued to the correct value. And alternately, you could put like a large screwdriver through one of the disc brake holes. Make sure you're not hit, you don't hit the bleeder uh, nipple or the, uh, the brake hose and you'd be safe. He's put anti-seize on that bearing. It's a pretty critical step. Otherwise, you, um, you're you gonna have a hell of a time changing the wheel the next, next round when that uh, shaft corrodes onto that bearing. But puts the two fasteners there, torque to the same, same value as the rear wheel bolts. I'm not gonna do a front wheel change because it's pretty much much, much easier. It's just take off the five lug nuts and then you have the front wheel off and you need to support the scooter. So there, there's how you do a front tire. Uh, the rear, rear one, once you know how to do a rear one, you know how to do a front tire. Again, those torques are not that critical. It gets the shock back in place. And if you want to torque the uh, the shock nut, that's about 30 foot pounds, but not critical. Just tight is good enough, but not over tight. Nylock. And then we'll put the wheel speed sensor. One thing to keep in mind with a new wheel speed sensor, you want to peek at the clearance, make sure there's, that sensor is not rubbing on the, um, onto it. Shouldn't be an issue. You can listen for it. No, no problem there. If that if that tone wheel is bent, it will cause a problem. We had a customer recently have to order a new tone wheel because he mangled it. I'm like, normally you never mangle that part, but if you don't know what you're doing, you could. So that that large nut can be torqued to about 80 foot pounds. And two ways to lock up the rear wheel. If you have the barrier tool, which is difficult to use on this engine, takes a lot of work to get access to, do that. You can have a friend hold the rear brake really, really tight. And he's, uh, Travis just uses a zip tie to do that around the rear brake. It's like a reusable zip tie. And he just locks up the rear brake. I could go over there and hold it for him. And now he has the torque wrench set to 80 foot pounds. There you go. So the cap goes on and you line up so one of those slots lines up with the holes uh, that are uh, milled into that axle shaft. And you got the cotter pin in place. The two uh, fasteners that hold the uh, speed sensor wire. And you use a T25 Torx driver to tighten those. Getting the Torx not critical, but you just want to snug them. They are small screws. And for the muffler, typically we always replace the, the gasket that's in the muffler. It typically is deteriorated by the time you need a rear tire. Very common uh, 
issue, you put some uh, anti-seize on the threads of the bolt because those are common to seize up. So as it tightens up, there's a little bit of anti-seize in the, um, the threads. And again, look in the description for all the part numbers that you'll need for the gasket, the cotter pin, the tire stem, and the tire size for a GTS. So his way of pulling out the old uh, bushing, just get a big flat blade screwdriver and just pry it out. And the more deteriorated they are, the easier they, they are to get out. And we'll use a small exhaust expander. We do have those available on our website. Again, look in the description for the part number for that tool. And what it does is it evenly expands the, the, the pipe there so it can accommodate a new gasket. And we're using the original Vespa gasket, does have like a different style to it. Uh, the kind of uh, rough, rough part does go outside. And you can use a socket, a mallet, a piece of wood, a wood block to kind of tap that in place. You know, whatever, just something to evenly tap it. Trying to, uh, just hit it from the corners, it's gonna distort that gasket quite a bit. Put the clamp back on in a specific position, kind of line up roughly where it needs to go. He'll aim the header pipe for the tailpipe there and just kind of slide it right onto the spigot and get one of the fasteners started. And those use the T40 uh, Torx driver it got kind of a weird uh, serrated uh, lock washer along with a really thick flat washer. And you want to get them all started and then move on to uh, snugging, snugging them all in place and then torque them to about 16 or 17 foot pounds. So you can't really see what he's doing. Pretty much note the position of that clamp when you take it off on a factory bike. The, the gap on the clamp should not line up with one of the gaps on the, um, on the thing. And it should be far back enough where it covers up the first little spots of the, the holes. So he'll get these all torqued up. The next thing he's gonna do, actually I'll jump, jump the gun, is I'll make sure the front tire is inflated. He already has the rear tire inflated to the recommendation. But before you do the traction control ASR calibration, you wanna make sure you have your front tire uh, pressure set as well. And it's pretty close. You do anywhere from about 25 to 30 PSI in the front, kind of depending on your, your preference. So whether you're just installing the speed sensor or doing a tire change, you need to recalibrate your ASR system. This is on a 2015 and newer Vespa GTS. So he started the scooter. Rolled it. He rolled it just a little bit to turn off the ABS and ASR light. And then ASR is off and it, on the SuperTech is indicated by that. He's going to hold both the start button and the ASR button. And see how the, the flash rate is like a slow blink versus the faster blink. Now he's going to go on a ride on a smooth straight surface around 18 miles per hour. And you're going to continue doing that until the light uh, goes off if I recall. Uh, I think it goes on solid and then you have to cycle it. Through. It actually goes on solid and then you cycle the ASR off and then the, the ASR system is then calibrated.
So there you go, that's how you change the rear tire in a shop environment. I hope that helps a home user, kinda you can get an idea of what you need to do if you need to change a tire on the side of the road or if you're doing your own workshop or if you're doing it in a shop environment. Uh, obviously see in a shop environment, everything's set up for a more efficient operation versus doing it at home with basic hand tools. It may take you an hour to do the job or something. In a shop, you can do it pretty quickly with all the correct tools. And in addition to the tire job, we've upgraded the speed of the scooter. This is Robot from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Check out our website for scooter tire deals. Usually if you buy a pair of tires, we have some killer prices on them. Tires are so, so competitive and hard. You know, it's a race to the bottom trying to sell tires. I'll just get to the point. But help us out. We do have tires available. We always have them in stock and they're always fresh stock. You know, we rotate through our tires very quickly. Um, as for the speed sensor video, Watch the other video on installation of that tone wheel on how to upgrade the speed of your 2020 HPE GTS. Super simple mod. I've played with the variators. I've played with the engines on these. I think they're very well set up other than that top speed, this motor.